Welcome to uh, uh, Human Resources. Uh, this week we'll be covering Section 4, which is basically on analyzing work and designing jobs. Part of HR is to be involved into the analyzation and designing, uh, uh, helping a manager design the workflow that looks at the person to uh, improve its intrinsic and uh, also its extrinsic uh, reward system. Okay, so let's go on developing uh, workflow analysis. And again, we'll be using our concept maps, and this is section four, chapter four. You take me online, face-to-face, -face, or a lecture uh, uh, classes at a supplement, or if you're taking me in a different uh, format. Okay, so what do what we talk about when designing workflow? We're looking at, you're bringing back your economics. So you're looking at different inputs. Look at human resource or capital as a input or a service provider. So what that basically tells me in a nutshell is that uh, as a provider, I'm looking at raw inputs, I'm looking at what kind of equipment my uh, uh, workforce should be utilizing or is required to use, and I'm looking at the human resources. Do I have enough individuals trained or cross-trained to look at that? Now, for the output for every type of work, again, I'm looking at the product and service information and how to measure the output. So I have some individuals that will be uh, doing this on a day-to-day -day basis. Others may be doing this as a supplemental or a cross-training. Do I measure the same output? for one that does it every day or one that does it once a month? And those are some questions HR has to uh, answer. The next one is organizational structure. Collaboration to achieve goals. Most organizations we talked before in other classes and management and business and everything else are very centralized. They are centralized for the core industries, the marketing the functions, the finance, the accounting, all are centralized. But whenever they're dealing with customers, they're basically decentralized or in a flatter type of organization. Smaller organizations starting off are more decentralized and become more centralized over time. But what aspect do you become fully centralized or you have a component? Most companies you'll find out that are successful have a, a, a centralized component to it for the corporate offices and every uh, local uh, branch that deals with um, individuals or customers is a decentralized or flatter organization. And you all have the sign, uh, you know, you look at the same common goal. The more centralized, the more you can keep the common goals. The more decentralized, you have more uh, interpretation of what the common goals and the marketing is. But it could be uh, workable. You know, most uh, uh, we're working in a, in a, a strictly uh, environmental uh, forces are affecting us, uh, internal and external, so we have to be more flexible on that. Okay, so let's look at workflow. When I look at workflow, when I'm designing it, I look at, first of all, not with the individuals in mind, I'm designing processes of manufacturing. I worry about the individual later, I have to design the process flow. When a customer calls, who does he, what type of individual or in the, uh, uh, it could be a computer technology or it could be a face-to-face -face individual. Usually when it's a sales, someone's selling something, it goes to a face-to-face -face because you want to make sure you, you build up the relationship. If it's like checking on your bills or something else, that could be computerized because you know, you're just looking for general information. So when you're looking at how you design the flow, it's looking at the processes. So you know, I'm not looking at people at this point. I'm just looking at what key factors or key decision points do I have to make a decision when I do my process flow like manufacturing I'm, I'm coming up with something at one point I gotta put something in it another point I gotta label it and it's the same when you look at a process flow so I'm looking at different positions and duties you know I'm looking first of all what I have in HR and if I'm coming up with a change in the process could I utilize the same individual I have just give him or her more additional training and do I have to change the job description and the job specification sometimes I do when I change that that doesn't mean I pay them more or I pay them less depending on what the market bears and then the job is Itself with other duties, okay? And then you have the uh, Fleshman uh, analysis. You know, he's looking at the subject matters, evaluate the jobs in terms of ability, need to perform the job. So these are basically part of my job uh, specifications that I need. And then certain abilities. And these are the uh, abilities, you know, written comprehensive, could you read? I'm doing manufacturing. Most people, just because they're out of high school, may still have a very low reading comprehensive uh, comprehension uh, uh, ability. This hurts because a lot of businesses, even like, say, a manufacturing 
coming back. I need the technical skills. I know how to do some programming. Okay, uh, manual the the uh, dexterity. Oh, geez, uh, sore on the words there. But basically, could I have the ability with my hands and uh, function to do the task? If I'm a mechanic, if I'm too large of a mechanic and I'm doing it with a small car, I may not be able to get my hand in there, or vice versa. It depends on the skills that I'm looking for. What kind of a uh, uh, individual uh, and mobility that individual should possess originality and stigma you know some jobs take a lot of pressure some jobs are more relaxed so what kind of, you know sometimes you stand on your feet all day long and it's not for everyone okay all right, so we have the job analysis. Now, important job analysis. When I'm looking at importance of job analysis, it's the building block for human relations management. I have to understand the job, exactly what it pertains, what uh, aspects of the jobs are required, what aspects I could either contract out, what aspects or ability the individual should have, or what kind of training, cost training, an individual should possess to be successful at that job. And I design the work around that task or that process flow. I do plan I need to make sure I have the right individuals there all the time and when I need them. I have to make sure I have the training. I have to make sure that my performance relates to the abilities that he or she should possess. Understand at the beginning, you're not going to have those abilities. Through training, you get better. Look, I never knew how to drive a car until someone taught me how to drive a car. And I was a little cautious and very driving slow. Now I could drive comfortably and relax. Not too relaxed, but still very aware. But I'm, I don't have that pressure because I already know the, the distance of the car. I know how to stop. I know the functionality of the car. I feel uh, uh, comfortable in that position. And then your career planning, what do you do for the next step? Remember when we talk about Maslow, Herzberg, all the motivational theories that we'll be talking about from HR. Once I hit a certain plateau, and I, as for myself, I have achieved that plateau. And once I've reached that, I no longer and more, I'm motivated, but it's boring because I could do this. It, it's not a challenge. Where other individuals, they reach that plateau and they love to be in that plateau. They, it's no I mean, it's a challenge for them. Every day is a different challenge, but they don't want to be over challenged. So they already know what to expect and they love that uh, redundancy, for lack of a better word. Different type of individual, different type of ability, different type of uh, 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 personality, different types of attitude. Remember, so as HR, I'm trying to find the right individual for the right type of task to, uh, design. For that process flow that I'm needing. If I'm not dealing with customers, I may not be looking too much as uh, 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 communication skills uh, outside with different team members because mine is basically all internal with just a few individuals, even though communication is important. Not as important as when I'm dealing with different customers who run after another different culture, different background, different ideas, different uh, age, different group, different generation. All those are important in effective communication for a sales individual, but they may not be the same if I'm an assembly line just working one or to uh, uh, talking to one or two individuals, okay? So we have this, okay? Now, uh, uh, trends and job analysis, designing the work by project rather than job. Again, I'm looking at the project. I'm not looking at what the job descriptions are. Here's what I need to uh, achieve this. I need someone as a carpenter. I need someone as an engineer. I need some, whatever the tasks are. And once I have those Task, then I try to find the individual within the organization or outside your organization to fit those needs. If I have someone that has similar needs but not exactly, that's when additional training may come in. If I know down the road we're changing more technology, again, different uh, additional training to retain my regular workforce. It keeps the morale of the individual working for you. As you're growing, you're also growing. Understanding some individuals may not want to take that next leap, and those are the individuals that either stay until the job is uh, 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 no longer needed, and then you just uh, uh, find a way of uh, the individual leaving your organization through either uh, uh, through some kind of a severance package or a buyout package. Okay. Let's go with the job design. The job design has several uh, aspects into it. First of all, how does the job work? What the skills. You know, do I have to have computer skills? Do I have to uh, be certain, uh, have certain strength, muscle skills? You know, I'm a fireman. I have to be able to carry a certain average person out on the ladder or vice versa. <clears throat> Knowing there's an exception. Somebody's really heavy, it's going to take a, 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 a couple of individuals. But on the average, most individual in America, I think it's anywhere from 140 to about like 185. You should be able to. Uh, uh, comfortably be able to move that individual, okay? And the skills needed for that. Now, sometimes the job changes or the technology changes, so now I have to, what we call, redesign the job. HR is involved in this, trying to keep, remember, HR, your whole thing is keeping the workforce I have and helping them learn. That's how you become a learning organization, you know, uh, uh, through job analysis. Industrial engineering, find the simplest way to structure, uh, maximize the efficiency, you look at, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, the scientific method looks at that, uh, quick training to perform the job. Some jobs, it's, you know, if it's just an addition, a, a different training, he or she's already been in the job, I'm just bringing a new tool. It's not as much as me training a brand new employee coming in. They just have to learn that one aspect that's changed, uh, so that works out better, okay? And then uh, highly specialized, uh, repetitive jobs, different type of an individual and different kind of uh, training. Job characteristic models and motivation. When I look at different job characteristics, part of HR is to make the job challenging. You know, when we looked at different things, um, Maslow, Herzberg, uh, uh, Theory X, Theory Y, Z, uh, Z theories, different motivational equity theories. The whole thing boils down to, do I feel that I have responsibility? Do I feel self-worth? Do I feel that I could do the job? Do I see that there's a need that's helping the organization and helping other people? All those are factors. So when I designed a job, a characteristic of a job motivation, I'm looking at skill variety. Don't get, make it boring, so it's uh, one thing, but challenging. Uh, identify with the task. And you can see a lot of times this uh, whole product was designed by George Machaki, or this uh, uh, garment was uh, uh, sewn from beginning to end by George Machaki, whatever. Task significance. What importance does it have for the individual within the company or with outside if I'm selling the service autonomy allows an individual to make the decision we all there's different ways to get to the same point of view if I'm going to go to the uh, neighborhood uh, uh, the hardware store I could take the main route you know if you look at your GPS you want to use the expressways you want to use all rural you want to do uh, the fastest route there's different ways to get to the same point so the same thing when I'm bringing a different uh, uh, a job design. I give the individual parameters. Certain things has to be done in certain sequential orders, but you could maybe move around some of the orders if it uh, doesn't affect the overall goal and product of the uh, of the task that's at hand. Okay, and the feedback. Feedback is important. How am I doing? Even if you're doing great, let them know that they acknowledge. People are people. They're not machines. They're not robots. Even robots, I got a feedback and it says, here's uh, uh, how you're doing. <coughs> so it gives me some feedback on the uh, if they're effectiveness of the product or needs oil change or needs something else but you need people need feedback more than anything else and that feedback is basically how you motivate designing motivating jobs so it's just a different way now when I look at this designing there's a whole bunch of them job enlargement how do I enlarge a job and remember it's not that I'm downsizing and enlarging a job I'm enlarging the job because the process makes it enlarge sometimes when I'm large I'm just adding one other thing I'm not taking a job away from somebody else or maybe they're sharing a job but I'm enlarging it if I'm taking something away then I have to redesign and restructure the job especially if I got a union I may have to give them another title or if I'm taking some away reducing the title and, and again that uh, works with uh, what do you call it uh, a compensation you know enlarging a job combining several ones enlarging motivating the people job rotation you know it's cost training you move people from different parts so you know uh, you, uh, what you're doing at the beginning of the assembly affects someone in the middle the person in the middle or uh, uh, works at the end so he sees oh here's the end product I wish I would have took care of this and this all uh, makes the job enlargement so everyone knows what the other individual is doing even though you may do your own specific uh, job okay job enrichment is empowering you know you got Herzberg intrinsic you know how do I give the employees more you can stop the production line or you could uh, adjust the way you're uh, uh, work assembly is like it's easier for you uh, 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 because if you lay it out this way it makes sense for you that may be down the road you may change the whole process if it makes sense for you maybe a lot of other individuals that may be uh, make sense so then you'll go back to some kind of re uh, job re uh, design your self-managing work team a lot of teams you're eliminating a middle manager you're a smaller team you're in groups just like in this class you're today you're doing a team project you're in smaller groups so you all do little portions you could do all of it but you could do little portions that you feel more comfortable with or somebody else doesn't feel comfortable and say I could do that task but then you manage yourself within the team as long as the ultimate goal at the end comes up that everyone has it so you know you have the individuals that have the right variety they identify with the team they have their own self uh, what do you call it uh, uh, motivation and everything else on there okay so you had that self-managing team you see more and more that's a way of motivating so instead of me I'm not micromanaging the team after a while I'm talking about employees that have been with the company and understand what is required to do. Not brand new employees. There you have to do step by step on what to do or uh, him what to do because they have no clue. Okay?
until they get better okay so now the other one you have flex time like flex time a lot of people some people are morning people some people are afternoon people some are evening individual the flex time you have some ability when you could come and go but the quarter time everyone has to be here at this time because where our customer base is coming in here here's when everyone's going to meet at this time so we could discuss the issues so that's part of flex time so you don't have all the flexibility but you have to make sure that there's always some coverage especially if i'm doing customer service so i may not have to come at eight o'clock when the store opens because I have very few people so I could have a, a smaller staff at noon you know from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock people go for lunch I want full staff and again I got some flex time for the evening about 5 6 o'clock people coming home the second traffic they come visit my store if I'm in the main thoroughfare and but then the other times uh, they can have some flexible times going home later when the, uh, uh, the process is slower and it works the same thing for internal okay so flex times has its abilities but it just has to be more controlled and you have to have a right individual some individual want to come from 8 to, uh, to 12 uh, to 4 and that's it they're regular they're that's the way they're programmed. I don't want any flex time. I don't want to change it. Now that you change it during the week for a certain time to accommodate, that could be uh, done well if you got technology and flexibility that you always have some individual on site. Okay, job sharing. And you see a lot of this for like part-time uh, employees you know, or uh, 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 women or men that want to stay home with their children. So they basically don't want to work full-time, but they still want to keep the skills going. The company may say, hey, we don't want you full-time, but I know after a few years when your child uh, is in school and you want to come back to the workforce, you still train but I have this other aspect to take care of my peaks and low it helps you and helps me as an employee as an employer and it also helps motivation so I share between different uh, things I am um, here from 8 to noon and you're here from noon to uh, uh, to uh, what do you call it? Uh, to four o'clock a lot of families do that they, they drop off the kids you know the, the husband or, or, or the male or the woman or female whatever drops off the child in the morning and the husband picks up uh, in the afternoon vice versa so they kind of have already a job sharing we take care of what we do what we could do you know teleworking teleworking is not for everyone just like my online class is not for everyone uh, some of my classes are hybrid so you have half in class and half uh, face to face but it's not for everyone so but some individual the self-motivated they could come home and they want to the flexibility so they work at home or you've got customer service you know certain things they work at home they answer the phone uh, during the daytime and they still could watch a child or they could do whatever activities or grandparents or watching their loved ones or something else so they have that uh, thing but remember it's uh, it's still more for managerial professionals and sales jobs there's a lot of uh, you'll tell uh, from home uh, uh, aerodynamics basically is how do you adjust your body do you need a microphone here and a lot of that is just to help you because if you're on the computer all the time you have certain screens, you got to have certain glasses. Uh, uh, do you have a, 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 you know, your wrist start hurting? Do your back hurts? How do you do some exercise? How do you keep focused? How do you look at the, the light? All that makes it easier. And, and since technology is different, you try to adjust the workplace to make it comfortable for the individual. It could be comfortable chairs, it could be some kind of stretching or anything else, okay? Now, the other one you have to look at mental capacity. Technology is an assistant, but technology sometimes can be a very frustrating tool. But, you know, a simple, uh, 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 mental demands of overlay. Uh, if you overload it, you give them too much at, at one time to your employees, too much information, you burn out, you overload, I can't handle it. So you, it depends how you break off the work and how do I motivate the job. Do I give them the whole project, tell them here it is, but as a manager, I'm just giving you, we only need to just make this service date first, this is what we need at this point. You know, somebody's building a house or a, a corporate center, they have to head the foundation first, so they're, they're focusing on that next one, they do the next level, the next level, and then they start doing a car carpentry to painting so all that has to be broken down even though they know here's the whole project and it could be five years two years to complete but here's the job we're doing from this side to this side okay so that simplifies it makes it easier now just break it down to a daily task for an individual in organizational improvement you know simple to operate equipment clear instructions okay so now you got job analysis now when I look at job analysis what is the job I'm going to anal analyze the job proper staying, uh, training proper appraisal, proper function. These are all inv uh, involved in the job detail. The next one, the job description. You have to tell me step by step. If I'm going to be talking 80% of my customers, I'm looking at my training to be more on communication. If I'm talking, uh, I'm always in a computer, my training should be more in the technology and how to talk to customers uh, uh, over the internet through either, uh, uh, FaceTime or uh, what do you call it, uh, or Skype, because that's my communication. Different way of talking to, in front of a microphone, not seeing the computer, or you see them on your face or on your screen 
screen and you still have to have the pleasant and you have to be careful that the mic's on the mic's not off you know what you say the mic picks up you got to be very careful okay uh, essential duties uh, you know I need to carry out a uh, duty now the other one is if I'm looking at this Caskell is basically knowledge skills ability and other characteristics that's your information what knowledge you actually need about a job if I'm doing engineering I should some know how to do math I should do some engineering if I'm doing accounting I should know the function basically you know the balance sheet is I have to know what accounts receivables are I have to know how the functionality I have to be able to have some skill sets or learning or understanding to do the job right then I have the ability do I have the ability to add uh, and sometimes ability could be uh, learned some abilities come on natural so I'm an artist I could learn all I want to be an artist some people just have the natural ability they could draw a picture they're creative I could do it but it's taking me too long so I, I may be able to develop I have the knowledge and develop the skill but I don't really have that inherited ability right now it doesn't mean I can't develop it okay depends on the job be another characteristic your personal trade certificates and, and degrees okay so that takes care of my job specification sources of job information is direction of op uh, occupational titles published by US Department occupational information networks uh, uh, online job description and labor okay so we have that one position analysis questionnaire and when I look at the questionnaire standardized job questionnaire work behavior certain questions job characteristics appreciate wide variety there's a lot of articles and we'll be discussing things about assessments HR is a lot of assessments you have so many people want to do the job how do I basically minimize my pool and just get the people that are really ready for this type of work I understand I'm going to miss some some may miss it but that's why you have assessments and which ones so they're not discriminatory which ones actually measure the tasks I want the individual to, to know and, or have the ability to do certain tasks. If I want someone to pick up 185 pounds, I have a dummy that weighs 185 pounds. Could he or she lift them whatever way, drag them, pull them, pick them up to, from point A to point B? I can measure that. I could see that's worked it as long as I need that, okay? Other jobs may be a little bit harder. Okay, key parts, uh, output, relationship to other individuals, job content. All these are key parts of what I'm looking for my uh, questionnaire. So I'm asking, are you honest? Could you deal with uh, flexibility? Could you deal with irate customers? And they're embedded in the, in the questionnaire. How I respond, uh, you know, it's not only one question. There's other questions that's the same questions and positioned or introduced to the reader in a different uh, 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 format. Sometimes you may just be watching a video and it says, how would you handle handle this and to give you uh, two or three or four scenarios so they're not doing too much reading they're you're actually seeing what happened visually and now you're responding that's another way to work if English is a second language you can kind of understand it so what you need to know remember what you learned today is elements of workflow analysis you need to know how your process works whether it's manufacturing service customer service how does it flow how does it relate to the whole organizational structure so it's like a car I know what a battery does it's one component of the whole organization of uh, mechanics and electrical and engineering and water and cooling and hydraulics of an, uh, to make that car move and make me comfortable but what is that one component doing how do I fit job analysis and HR how does HR help a manager analyze the job so he knows the so the, uh, the manager he or she knows the soft skills uh, exactly what the jobs how to break it down what am I looking for and what components so I hire the right individual trends in job analysis and we've talked about that designing job for efficiency and majority individual knowing I had to do some flexibility to individual because we're all unique in a way and if it's only uh, tweaking it here for what is this person wants a taller desk wants a small small of this, wants a bigger screen, wants some headphones, whatever. Motivation in job design and uh, aerodynamics uh, in, in job de design. You know, how's the office set up? How, uh, someone gets hurt. Even inside the office, you have a lot of uh, different types of injury than you would in construction. You could have, you know, a corporal tunnel, your neck could hurt, your eyes could be bothering, watering off, you could get stiff neck. You get, you know, overweight, uh, you know, I'm not saying that's a problem, but uh, when I get left construction and came into uh, the manager, I put on a lot of weight because I'm not as active, even though I'd be walking back and forth. I'm more in the desk, walking from here to the coffee machine to pop machine. And then, you know, more in the computer. So I'm, uh, 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 my body's not my my mind is sharper, but then my body uh, suffers a little. So how do I minimize that and, and have some kind of a activity that he or she has to go to different parts of the building just to get that uh, wellness or that uh, uh, active, get the heart uh, pumping again? Okay, and mental issues of a job. A lot of jobs are more stressful than construction. Construction, you tired your body. You could work and think and your mind gets tired and your whole body still has the effect because now it's all coming up to here uh, all the senses working all right so that takes care of our section four 
that we're having to take them into mean human resource management uh, 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 training, and uh, we're looking at uh, analyzing work, designing jobs. Again, utilize my concept maps. Uh, if you're in a, taking me on an online class or face to face, or um, what do you call it? Uh, a hybrid class or some other different uh, 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 or a training session this all works out well for you it gives you a general idea so you can look at it and say hey I know what I uh, I need to do it just gives me ideas what I could do with my team remember all this is we're all unique it gives you different ways of looking at it addressing an issue and doing it step by step and look, uh, taking another look at your job design uh, do I have the right people or is my job design properly for the, the type of employee I need and vice versa do I have the right tools and the right employees, which basically gives me a good product. Again, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and I'll see you in our next section. Bye.